Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or even good tomorrow, depending on your location, wherever you may be around the world. I'm looking forward to this podcast today, and I hope to leave you inspired. Today's broadcast is called The Devil's Yard Sale, or you could simply call it a continuation of Mr. Paul Harvey's If I Were the Devil. Here we go. One hot summer day, the devil decided to have a yard sale. I had tables set up on a long driveway leading up to his house with all kinds of tools on the table. Someone stopped and asked about a strange-looking tool on the first table and said, What is this tool? The devil replied, Well, that's my murder tool. To which the man asked, Why would you want to sell it? And Satan answered, I just don't need it anymore. They walked to the next table, and the man asked about that tool, and Satan said, Well, that's my lust tool, and I don't need it anymore either. The next table, the same thing. That's my thievery tool, and I don't need it anymore. And the next one, that's my adultery tool. That's my atheism tool. That's my envy tool. That's my greed tool. That's my rape tool. And I don't need any of them anymore. Spying a table in the devil's garage with a wedge-shaped item and asked the devil, well, how about that one up there? And the devil replied, oh, no, that one's not for sale. And the man said, why are you selling everything else but that one? The devil said, I've found that one is all I need in present days. You see, that's my discouragement tool, and I can control mankind with that one tool. You see how it's shaped like a wedge? I can find one small crack in a man or a woman, and I put that sharp edge into the crack, and wham, I drive that baby in. And with that one discouragement tool, I can have complete and total control of all mankind. And the devil was so proud of himself. Think about it. Discouragement. Who hasn't felt its chilling grip on the heart? Discouragement neutralizes optimism, assassinates hope, and erases courage. Perhaps no other human emotion is so commonly experienced and yet so infrequently exposed. Discouragement is a temptation common to man. And in dealing with it, sometimes we need tenderness and other times we need toughness. But either way, discouragement is not to be tolerated or wallowed in. It's to be fought. If we linger in discouragement, it can be costly. Its sense of defeat and hopelessness saps us of energy and vision. It can consume a lot of our time. It can keep us from doing what we need to do because we don't want to face it. And it can even be contagious, weakening others' hope. When this happens, discouragement simply becomes sinful indulgence in unbelief. No different than indulging in lust or anger or other sins of disbelief. What's tempting you to discouragement today? It's time to fight, ladies and gentlemen, not powder or shrink. Think of discouragement as your faith being choked. When you're choking, it's not the time to plop down in front of the TV with a plate full of comfort food to meditate your melancholy. You need to dislodge the obstruction so you can breathe. You need to fight for your life. You may need to get someone to give you the Heimlich maneuver. Go get encouragement. Faith-fueled courage. Don't let discouragement choke you. Ladies and gentlemen, when we start anything, a marriage, a new job, raising children, building a home, investing in your retirement plan, etc., your vision is that we're going to start down here at the bottom left corner of the page, and it's going to be a straight line upward to the far right top corner. It will not be a straight line. It will be full of ups and downs, setbacks, delays, flat tires, deaths in the family, family emergencies, layoffs at work, etc. A lot of different things will come down on your head. That's the devil working to get his discouragement tool in. My old saying, the cleanliness of theory is no match for the mess of reality. See, why some people succeed against all odds. Remember this. Every dream will be challenged. These powerful words from a mentor of mine has been burned into fire into my memory. 
Rarely a dream or goal comes true easily and effortlessly without delays or problems or hurdles. It's far more common, however, that you have to overcome many obstacles and you have to suffer some pain before achieving any meaningful target. And the bigger your dreams, the tougher your challenge is going to be. The more ambitious your goals, the more likely it is that you will face difficulties on your ways towards it. When this happens, what will you do? Will you just give up? Or will you persist and struggle but succeed? A lot of that depends upon your attitude and experience. Some of it depends upon your skills and your network, and a tiny bit depends on luck or chance. I was recently invited to contribute a chapter to a textbook on building a business and to share three things I wish I'd known when getting started. In the introduction, I wrote, quote, the key to my success back then lay more in the fact that I stuck to whatever I tried long enough for to make it work. And, and it's absolutely true. With little, if any, knowledge or experience about business, as a novice speaker and marketer, the only thing that kept my entrepreneurial journey going was a stubborn unwillingness to give up. You see, think about this bumpy road. Let's say you start out on a holiday trip. You load up your car with all the gear you need to enjoy a lazy week-long vacation with your family and plan your destination, and you set out on the drive. Halfway along your planned route, the road gets tough and bumpy. You're driving along an unpaved path with potholes and pits, bushes and brambles scraping the side of your vehicle. It's an uncomfortable ride with a lot of jolting and bumping in your seat. But unfortunately, this is the only way you can get to that lovely camping spot you remember so fondly and you loved relaxing at. So what do you do? Well, you could change your plans. You could turn around, drive back home, or drive back to the highway and go somewhere else, even if your heart's set on this particular holiday spot. Or you can curse and you can swear at the discomfort and keep on going. Or you can count your blessings. Be happy about having a vehicle to get you there, a path, even if a bad one, that leads to the place and a map to direct you along the right route. Plus, you really, really love that spot, and you want to be there soon. In fact, you want that so bad, you're even willing to get down and hike the rest of the way if the car can't make it through. That journey is your life and your business growth path. The vehicle is you. The driver is your attitude. See, see, if the driver is decisive and determined, he just won't give up, or she just won't give up. What drives you? The courage and persistence to keep on going past the hurdles and obstacles is powered by purpose, your purpose. You must always keep your dreams in front of you. You must always keep your eye on the goal, just like a field goal kicker in a football game. He has to attempt to kick a football from 55 yards, and the ball must go between the two upright, upright goalposts to win the game with two seconds left. When he kicks, where do you think he'll be looking? But wait, the other coach calls a timeout just before the ball is snapped. Why? He wants to get inside the kicker's head to try and mess up his concentration. But the kicker fights it off, and when the ball is snapped to the holder for the kicker, his eye is so focused that when he kicks, he wills the ball through the uprights. See, that's the way life is. Life will discourage you. The devil is trying to get his discouragement tool in. Fight him off. Ladies and gentlemen, you might, you might have been after your dream for several months or several years, and, and you've seen many people who have fallen by the wayside. See, they let the discouragement tool get in. But you have held on, holding on like a mountain climber, climbing that mountain. The devil is trying to make you give up, but you are wise to his tricks. You will not be fooled by him again as you have in the past. This time, you will not be denied your rewards that you've been working hard towards your a whole life. So you are forged in fire. My friends, I hope this short talk is of some help to you in, in helping you to keep on keeping on. And remember this quote, winners never quit and quitters never win. The courage and persistence to keep on going past hurdles and obstacles is powered by purpose, 
your purpose. You need to discover it. You need to tap into it. You need to achieve it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is past time for all of us to begin to dream again and to show that devil that he does not control your future, that future that is standing right in front of you, in front of all of us, just waiting for you to claim your share. Folks, you keep your faith in God, and he'll never let you down. Forget the devil. And as Mr. Paul Harvey always said at the end of each and every broadcast, and now you know the rest of the story. God bless you all. Make it an awesome day. I want to thank you for tuning in today, and I'll see you soon in the winner's circle. This call is officially over. This is J.P. Smith. Good day.